we're here today to address the short-term, medium-term, and long-term plan here in the great city of Atlantic City as regards to Stanley Home Village. Um, as you know, a lot has been going on in the media. A lot has been said that is just not true. And one thing about the small administration, we say what we mean and mean what we say. And there's light at the end of the tunnel. That's 7.3 miles of heating and hot water pipes through a 6.3 acre site, which is Village 3, a 4.2 acre site that is Village 1, and a 4.2 acre site that is Village 2. So just think about that for a second. How many acres we're managing? 15 acres and cut the roads in between 16 acres that we're sending hot water through with pipes that have not been replaced since the 60s. Those pipes break. They run underneath the buildings, and when they run underneath the buildings, that picture that you see there is the picture of the gas pipes when we first arrived. It took me one week from our arrival in March to actually do an evacuation of one building, and, and thanks to, to uh, immediate action by, by the board, uh, start replacing the gas lines at Stanley Village. I'm coming from being a resident living in these conditions that you have been hearing about for some time now. I have experienced changes of the guards and Stanley home as we now have Mr. Tom Hamlin. And as I sit here and listen to everyone this afternoon from the mayor, the councilman on down to public housing, there still seem to be a shifting in responsibility on one another. This is not helping the problem. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for such a great presentation. But I am a tenant that lives four doors down from the boiler room. And today, as I speak, I do not have heat or hot water. It sounds good in the press, but I'm living in this. Where there has been promises made to the tenants down through the years. I have heard about redeveloping and moving us out and rebuilding, and my question is where are we going to go? because the other housing buildings is also somewhat in worse conditions than Stanley Homes. And so yes, this is a problem. It's been an ongoing problem and it comes through the lack of keeping up and taking care of your problem. This did not just get here in the last year or two. This has been an ongoing thing down through the years. Mismanagement, let's call it what it is. Mismanagement of fundings, where it should have been put back into the public housing authority, it was put elsewhere. Okay, I'm not gonna speak and call no names because I'm only here to tell the truth and tell it like it really is. We all know who we are. And so and because of these things that have taken place, it left the tenants and living in horrible, horrible conditions. We in the United States of America, we should have safe living quarters. We should have clean air. We should have clean water. We should not be inhaling mold. We should not be in there. The mice are running around like they pay your rent up in the house. It should not be infestation. This is unnecessary and it's uncalled for. And it's due to the neglect of the property. That's what it's due to. I thank Mayor Small because he did step in. Because we could not even get our trash picked up. That don't make sense. And I thank you, Mayor, for it. If it had not been for you, we wouldn't even have a bigger voting problem because trash was piling up. And why? Because they could not pay the people to pick up the trash. I had walked through grass where grass was up to my knees. Then it does not make sense how these living conditions are. We don't know why HUD decided to start downgrading in the funding. Oh, but I wonder why. 
Because of the money that has been coming in was not being dispersed properly and rightly. And let's be honest, I'm not here to speak because of the news people are here. We all know about the news. They gonna make their own decision anyway, no matter what they hear. But I'm here to tell you because I lived in it. I experienced it. Last winter, I had no heat. I had no hot water. I had mold and then the steam from the broken pipe. I've had all that. I lived in those conditions and through the winter months. And guess what? Winter is fastly approaching now. And there's still no change. It sounds good about the infrastructure. It sounds all good about redevelopment. All that sounds good. But in the meantime, in the right now time, I'm not talking about once was. I'm talking about what is. I drive two and a half hours at least twice a month to come down here and have communicate to, to talk to the residents, find out what the problems are, go to their units, just like I said to Miss Scott, that we're gonna find out why she doesn't have any heat and hot water. And this young lady right here, we're gonna find out today, not tomorrow. And I can tell you that Gateway has gone to door to door, knocked on the door to talk to the homeowner of residents on a regular basis. So the communication is improved. But I just want to remind everyone that this team only did here for less than two years, okay? And a lot has been done. You moved 72 people out of an area where they were in hotels before. <clears throat> you have the mayor's office and the mayor's department working with the housing authority. That wasn't happening before. You got the city council approving things that they didn't have to approve before, but now they're partnering with the housing authority. There's a lot that's been going on. And so I think it's time that we all come together and just let us, you know, get through this. We are not <coughs> going to have what we had last year. I will not allow it. I just won't allow it. November 30th, three boilers are gonna be in, the sisters are gonna be on those damn boilers, and I guarantee you, that I will be able to see as well as everybody else, Tom, the Board of Commissioners, the engineers, how the darn heating system is working up there in Essex County, New Jersey. You got it? Write that down. <laughs> uh, we have one more question.